Then the pilot in command invited me to take the captain's seat. It was a remarkable experience to again sit at the helm of a wonderful flying machine like the kind I had flown for so many years. Memories of flights across oceans and continents filled my heart and mind. I envisioned exciting takeoffs and landings at airports all over the world. Almost unconsciously, I placed my hands on the four throttles of the 747. Just then, a beloved and unmistakable voice came from behind, the voice of Thomas S. Monson. Dieter, he said, don't even think about it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not admitting to anything, but... Um, <laughs> It just may be that President Monson read my mind. <laughs> but if I crossed one leg over the other, the young boy would do the same thing. If I reversed the motion and crossed the other leg, he would follow suit. I would put my hands in my lap, and he would do the same. I rested my chin in my hand. And he also did so. Whatever I did, he would imitate my actions. This continued until the time approached for me to address the congregation. I decided to put him to the test. <laughs> I looked squarely at him, certain I had his attention. And then I wiggled my ear. My wife told me not to say that. <laughs> he made a vain attempt to do the same, but I had him. On a blind date, which we really didn't approve, she was all dressed up and waiting for her date to arrive when the doorbell rang and walked a man who seemed a little old, but she tried to be polite. She introduced him to me and my wife and the other children then she put on her coat and went out the door. We watched as she got into the car, but the car didn't move. Eventually, our daughter got out of the, out of the car, red-faced, and ran back into the house. The man she thought was her blind date had actually come to pick up another of our daughters who had agreed to be a babysitter for him and his wife. <laughs> We all had a good laugh over that. In fact, we couldn't stop laughing. Later, when our daughter's real blind date showed up, I couldn't come out to meet him because I was still in the kitchen laughing. Came and volunteered to bless the sacrament. We thinking that he was a member, my father gave him, who was the branch president, gave him the chance to bless the sacrament. I still worry about that. <laughs> I have to insert here, too, I wish I had heard President Uchtdorf and Brother Gibson when I was there, because I'm sure I was living below the potential that I had. And I even thought of who I could have gone and converted in the neighborhood, but I, that was a long shot. Uh, <laughs> I, I can think of Frank Turgeon across the street. He went to prison. And then Petey, uh, he went to prison, too. Uh, <laughs> It was a tough neighborhood. <laughs>